Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Dr. Abdul Adamu from Data Analytica. Previously, in our lecture on the stock valuation, we started with part one, which is the introduction to stock valuation. If you have not watched that part, you can click on the card up here. Then we go to part two. The part two this is the third part of the part two. The first part of the part two, we looked at the one period dividend discount model. If you have not worked that also, you can click on the card here. Then the second part of the part two, we looked at the multi-period dividend discount model. If you have not worked that also, kindly click the card up here. Then in this part, we are going to look at the Gordon growth model. This is named after Miron Gordon who developed this model. The Gordon growth model is named after uh, Miron Gordon. So it's used to determine the intrinsic value of a stock based on a future series of dividends that grows at a constant rate. So here the dividend grows at a constant rate. There is a growth rate which is constant and which is for infinite period of time. It's assumed that dividend grow at a constant rate in perpetuity that is for infinite period and solves for the present value of the infinite series of future dividend so for uh, a got down growth model the mathematical model is expressed as this so the dividend year one we discount it backward for year one the second dividend we discount it back two years back three years back up to the infinite time we discount it backward so this model is easily expressed as the dividend in year one divided by the cost of capital minus the growth rate the Gordon growth model holds only when the cost the cost of capital is greater than the growth rate or the growth rate is less than the cost of capital so these are our parameters we explained in the other lecture. So let's take an example and see. The company last dividend was 2 naira 40 kobo and its required rate of interest is 12%. If the dividend are expected to grow at a constant rate of 8%, this is our growth rate into the future. And if the cost of capital or the required rate of return is expected to remain at 12%, what is the expected stock price now? So we call our model is uh, PO equals to D1 all over PE minus G. From the question, our dividend now is equals to 2 Naira. 40 kobo. Our cost of capital, the required rate of return is 12%. Now our growth rate is 8%. So our D1, dividend one year from now, is GO into 1 plus G. So this will give us 2.4 times 1.08 if we multiply it our d1 will be equals to 2 naira 59 kobo so if we put this in our formula we have uh, d1 2.59 divided by the cost of capital is 0. 1 2 minus the growth rate 0 
zero eight. This will give us two point five nine divided by zero point zero four. And if we divide it well, we have sixty four naira seventy five cobalt. So the stock price now is sixty four naira seventy five cobalt. That is the intrinsic value now. So if you look the solution is simply this. Now the required rate of return, the KE that we found earlier, is equal to the expected rate of return, which is the expected dividend yield plus an expected capital gain yield. So if we solve for this KE, you can see if we solve the formula and make KE the subject of formula, this become So if we make KE the subject of formula, this becomes KE minus G equals to D1 all over PO. So if you take this one this side, KE becomes D1 all over PO plus G. That is how we got that. That is how we got this. So the D1 like we said earlier is this so here we are assuming do and po they are the actual price and the latest dividend p1 is the price a year from now so the capital gain is the future price minus the present price so the difference between it is what we refer to as the capital gain so if we do that then this equation here becomes this so this first part is what we call the dividend yield and this is the capital gain yield so therefore the expected rate of return is equals to the expected dividend yield plus the expected growth rate or the capital gain yield so let's take an example and see a company last dividend was Two naira forty cobo. This is our DO, and it's expected to grow at a constant rate of eight percent into the future. If the present price is sixty four naira seventy five cobo, what is the expected rate of return? We use this our formula. The DO says two point four. So our D1 will be 2.4 times 1.08. Don't forget our growth rate is 8% and our PO is 64.75. So this will give us 2.59. So if we input this into this formula, into this formula, so our KE, that is the expected rate of return, will be equals to D1, 2.59, divided by PO, 64.75, plus the growth rate, which is 0 0.08. So if you divide this by this, you have 0 0.04, plus 0 0.08, this gives us 0 0.12. So that means the expected rate of return is equal to 12%. That is how we can find that. So this is the solution. Now what are the assumptions of the Gordon growth model? There are several assumptions. One of the assumptions as mentioned earlier is that the the required rate of return must be greater than the, the growth rate. So if the growth rate is greater than the expected rate of return, the result will be wrong, meaningless and misleading. The second assumption is that this is not appropriate unless the company growth rate is expected to remain constant. If the growth rate is not constant, this 
uh, model is not appropriate. The condition also can never hold for a new startup because new startup does not have a constant growth rate. Most cases, some have a higher growth rate at the initial stage before it will normalize to a constant growth stage. So, but it does exist for many matured companies. The Gordon growth model is sufficient to handle the case of zero growth rate. So if we have a zero growth rate, that means the G is equal to zero. So it, the Gordon growth rate is going to be equals to this. If G equals to zero, it is going to be equals to dividend all over the expected rate of return. This expression is like the present value of a perpetuity for dividend. Then if you want to solve for the required rate of return, then the required rate of return is going to be equal to the dividend yield. That is this divided by this, which is our dividend yield as we showed earlier. So this states that the rate of return in a share of a stock that has no growth prospect is simply the expected dividend yield. So thank you for listening. This is the end of the lecture. If you enjoyed this lecture, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can like, share, and comment on the content to help us improve on it. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me coffee by clicking on the buy me coffee link below the video. Thank you.